ladies. Welcome back to another episode of The Woman Podcast. My name is Katie Bezet, and I'm your host. And today we've got Rebecca Shadswell with us. Hello, guys. Hey, Rebecca. So hey. good to have you here. <laughs> Glad to be back. <laughs> and wait, before we go any further, I just have to tell everyone that's listening that this girl, Katie, is a boss. I walked into this room, and there's all this, like, sound equipment set up to make this happen. I know y'all don't know what we're looking at right now. I'll quit messing with my keys on the table. <laughs> um, but it's like a whole bunch of cords and equipment. And I said, Katie, did you set this up yourself? And she said, um, yes, I did. Yeah. So for the first time. Yeah. F- for the first time. I'm just saying I don't normally set it up. I know. But I mean, this is like amazing. I know y'all don't know what goes on to this, but there's this are on with this but there's, there's like this, four chords no no there's like this board with a bunch of slider button things on it and like microphones set up and like anyway i just want y'all to know katie has like run this whole thing so props thanks rebecca yeah who needs a sound man yeah so anyway katie was like i got this you oh you can't be here no, no problem that's what this we'll stay on schedule podcast is about if you guys need a audio <laughs> person i'm actually looking for a job and i'd love to work yeah you don't have for anything your business to do as an audio engineer. Yeah. Boom. I'm going to start running weekend services. Um, so Please. if you're new to the woman podcast, Rebecca and her husband, Brandon are worship pastors at new life church and they are phenomenally gifted in not just the music worship side of life, but also in teaching and Rebecca is okay. Yeah. So good. Glad to be here. <laughs> I mean, you complimented me. Do I need to compliment you? Oh, gosh. So I always love having you on, Rebecca, just because in real life, when we're not sitting here with headphones and microphones, we're just, our friendship honestly consists of um, a lot of talking about what God is teaching us and what yeah. we're learning and what yeah. we're praying about. And um, yeah, I just love having friends that you can just literally talk about any topic and they're with you it can be spiritual it can just be what's going on in life it can be funny it can be a terrible mistake Mm -hmm. but i could send you like a dog meme and you're gonna laugh (laughs) which happened a couple days ago (laughs) and you didn't respond and so i had to say why did you not respond to my dog meme because it was really good (laughs) and then next thing you know we're talking about a new sermon that we've listened to but anyways i just I grow spiritually from those conversations and I would like to have those a little bit more on, on the podcast because I just think that, um, when God teaches you something, it's always really good. And, um, so anyways, yeah, that's what we're going to do today. So yeah, let's do how's it. everything in the Shatzel house? It's all, all as well. Yeah, we're doing good. My, um, son Xavier, we call him Zavi. He is back at little life, which is preschool. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And my daughter is now in first grade, and they started on schedule. I cannot tell you how excited I was that first week of August. Yes. Because, I mean, you know, it was a six-month summer break. I know. Yeah. So, um, anyway, she's in first grade. Things are going good. Uh, she had fall break last week, and so we got to have some a little bit of fun. But she's learning all kinds of new things. She's coming home informing me of things I did not know. Uh, one phrase she's saying all the time right now is the phrase, cool kids. Mm. She's letting me know when what we do falls below that standard. (laughs) So apparently cool kids take a certain type of lunch Uh, and a certain type of snack. uh And at first I was just kind of dismissing it. And then finally I was like, you take natural Cheetos. What is a cool kid snack? (laughs) She's like, it is Ritz with cheese in them. And she started making me a short list because she wanted me to go to the store and make sure she gets cool kid snacks. We're there. Are goldfish on the list? No, no. Are Lunchables? Um, Lunchable, well, you know, I've sent her Lunchables, and she's been trying to tell me, like, certain types are Uh, better, you know, of course, than uh than the ones Mm -hmm. that we get. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, and she's also been telling me that cool kids wear a certain type of mask. Mm. And what is that? Right. So I'm like, is yours have unicorns and hearts? They're metallic. (laughs) You have leopard. Like, what is a cool kid mask? Mm -hmm. And she said, Mom, they don't look like this. They go all the way around and they're stretchy, and boys have them, and girls have them, and you can just wear them around your neck all day. So I'm sure y'all know what I'm talking about. They kind of look like an infinity mm-hmm. scarf, but they're made out of bathing suit material. Mm-hmm. So I thought, you know, this isn't a big ask. I just get on Amazon, and $25 later. <laughs> <laughs> Not 25 days. Yeah, $25 later, and like two days later, 
six of them show up at our doorstep. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, you know, I'm just doing what I can. Here's your cool kid, Matt. Send her off to school. Feel a little proud of myself. Like, you know, she's excited walking into school with a little she's extra, prepared. a little extra pep, yeah. you know. And then I go early to pick her up that day and they call her from the office and then this creature steps out in the hall and starts coming towards me. And that is the best way I know how to describe what I was looking at. Um, And I remember thinking, what is coming towards me? It was a little ways off at first and I didn't know whether to tackle it or rebuke it. And but in my heart of hearts, I think I knew. And I just said, I said, is and the creature said, yes. And I said, do you have your mask over your entire face? And she said, yes. And I wish I could tell you in words what I was looking at. She had pulled that little bathing suit material covering her entire face, neck, face, everything. Mm -hmm. Had tiny little slit where her eyes were. And then her long, wavy blonde hair hanging out the slit. She looked like (laughs) a little monster. And so like I, up over the back of her head, like a up hood. over the back. Yes. With all her blonde hair coming oh, out the eye slit. Oh my God. And I was like, anyway, I don't even know how to explain what I was feeling on the <laughs> inside, but her teacher steps out in the hallway at that moment and says, I'm so glad to hear you say this because she told us that you, you told her to wear it that way. So she's worn it that way all day. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So um, maybe is that how the cool kids wear them? Let me tell you what we were not that day. It, it's so I tried to hide the mask after that point. And I don't really know why I told you this, except so you could understand what a just a simple day in my life is like and yeah. pray for me, have compassion and pray for me. Yeah. Well, so, um, yeah, I that, get it. I remember the cool kid thing. Yeah. Because I felt the same way as is my mom sent everything in foil <laughs> And we didn't. And we had the baggies that didn't even have the zip. Exactly. I don't yeah. know why the zip on the Ziploc felt like such a step up. I know. It's like, or if you had the Ziploc that when you zipped it, it was blue. Yeah. Or it changed colors. It's like you're an elite part of society yeah. if you have those. <laughs> what in a child, yeah, in I, a first grader, starts to think those I know. Things? I know. I was one in five. So let me tell you what we never had. We never had the zip. I never had a Lunchable, right. like an actual right. Lunchable. Oh, I know. My mom made our own Lunchables. It was like, I can slice the deli meat, and you can put it on the Ritz cracker and unwrap that foil. So, bless it. Well, I'm glad y'all are doing well, and life is good, and that children are back in school. Yeah. And all the mamas said, amen. Yeah, amen. I mean, we're riding the wave like everybody is. I feel like, you know, in and out of quarantine every other week. No, uh-huh. just kidding. But, but really. Yeah. I mean, I get it. Um, Okay, so, you know, we've been talking a lot lately about we didn't have Women Conference, and at the beginning of the year, though, we did have a very clear theme. Yeah. We felt like God spoke something to us for the Mm -hmm. women of our church. You shared that, I guess, a few weeks ago. Yeah, we did a little Devo that we put out online. Which was so good. And so, but then after that, we were talking, and you said that you did have kind of a whole other side of the story that you wanted to share I hadn't shared about yet yes so could you share that with Mm -hmm. us Mm -hmm. yeah and I'll just say when we really felt I say we because uh, Michelle is definitely the heart and soul of woman conference and I feel like God gives us clear vision as a team usually it's Michelle Angie and I are meeting and just really praying and seeking God for what his heart is for the women of our house for that year and so in January when we got together and we started sharing what God was doing what he was stirring in each of us we all landed on the word awaken as being an idea from God for the women for this year and there was a scripture that went with it and we were all just resonating with it like that is what God is wanting to speak to us this year that he is bringing an awakening and it was 2020 and everyone's excited. It's a year of new vision. I can't tell you how many people were so ready for 2019 to be over. We just could not wait for all God was going to do in 2020. So we get that word from the Lord and we're just like full of faith and expectation. It was before everything that would happen and define 2020. And so, um, What was cool is coming through all the craziness of 2020 and then getting closer to the time where we would have had the in-person conference, Mm -hmm. we started to look back at the vision God gave us and it was like, it it doesn't look like what we thought it looked like, Mm -hmm. but God knew what he was doing speaking this word over us. So why don't we still give the word that God is trying to speak speak to us this year? And it it doesn't have this... um, 
serene, beautiful, peaceful vision like it had, like we thought it might have in the beginning. Mm -hmm. But if God was saying, I'm awakening my daughters for a specific purpose in this time, then surely right now we need to grab a hold of that more than we we even realized we would need yeah. in January. Oh, yeah. So with our um, situation, those most of you, if you've heard me share recently, I've shared about it a couple of times, but we had a crazy circumstance the second day of the year, January 2nd. I walk in to check on my son. He's one and a half. Well, he was only 11 months at that time. 11 months old, he's in a nap, and I realize he's not breathing. We pick him up. He is blue. He's limp. He's unresponsive. And, I mean, it's very life-threatening and very obvious to me. I will never forget the feeling of what he felt like in my arms. And so we got to the ER as fast as we could. No one could figure out what was wrong, why he had no oxygen. They immediately uh, ventilated him or intubated, then ventilated him. He was on a ventilator. And the doctors just began to search for what was going on. It was such a crazy moment because I'd never been that scared in my life. And I don't know if I've ever been that alone because I'm in that room with a bunch of medical people I'd never met. They would not even let my husband back at first. So for a while, I'm literally standing there. And all I have is the Lord. Like, I could ask all the questions I could ask. But ultimately, the only person I had there with me was God. And um, I just remember praying. Well, I pro- you know, praying like I've never prayed before, and God's presence was so there in that room, and Brandon eventually was able to come in and tell me that other people were rallying and praying with us, and just reminded that the body of Christ is such an army, and like, well, you have no idea when you're going to be all of a sudden in something that's out of nowhere and unexpected, and it's like, I need somebody standing with me more than I ever have in my life. And it was like at that moment, I was so thankful that I'm in a life-giving body of Christ. Mm-hmm. Like, I, you know, we just texted a few people who begin to text other people and they begin to text in prayers and call us and show up at the waiting room, even though I couldn't even come out and talk to them. Mm-hmm. And it's like, we're not alone in the situation, even though it took me a while to realize people were standing with us. They were, and they were invading heaven on our behalf mm-hmm. when we needed it. And, and God did finally speak to me that Zavi's life would be protected, even though I had no visible evidence. I was looking at him. He's paralyzed. He's on a ventilator. He can't breathe on his own at all. We still have no clue what's happening. But I knew God would be true to his word. And so eventually the doctors figured out the cause. Mm -hmm. And the cause was a medication was inside his body that is only made for an adult. And all we know is the type of medication it was. It could have been a lot of different things. But the doctors were like, he has this in his body. And I'm like, what is that? And they're like, it could be this type of pain med. It could be this. And they start listing off all these things it could be. And I'm like, we don't we don't have that. We're not using that. And so I'm just racking my brain, like, what is inside of him? And how did he find it? And where did he find it? And, you know, this is January 2nd. We'd had family in for the holidays. So we'd done this massive, like, Brandon and I had been vacuuming the night before. So I felt even safer mm-hmm. to let my little 11-month, you know, old crawl around. And so I just was racking my brain, what is it? And and then all of a sudden, I have a thought of a person in my family who I know has a lot of medication with them often. Mm-hmm. And immediately, this anger starts rising up in me. And I just thought, they did this. Like, I had no proof. I had no, nothing. I just mm-hmm. immediately was like, why did this happen? Who caused this? Mm-hmm. They did this. And my husband could see it all over my face. And so it took a minute for the doctors to leave and everyone to kind of clear and my husband and I to have a little bit of time to ourselves. And he put me in check so fast. It was so good for me. And I don't know if you have people that will speak it, like speak the truth to you, the real truth, the hard truth, the truth you don't want to hear, but we have to have those people in our lives. And so he, it wasn't, you know, he didn't say a lot to me. He just looked at me and he said, Rebecca, I know what you are thinking and you cannot know if this person caused this to happen. You may never know what Zavi found, where he found it, what really happened, but you can know that no one in our friends or family would ever do anything to intentionally harm him. Mm -hmm. And it was like, honestly, it was like a check from the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And um, it's like the Holy Spirit put his hand on my chest and he said, um, do not choose blame right now. It is not your friend. And I remember having this realization, like, God is here in this moment. He has not left me. He has a plan for Zavi's life. I don't know how Zavi's going to make it, but God has spoken it's going to happen. I don't know what all it's going to take, but God is here in this moment. 
So why would I leave this moment of faith and choose blame instead? Mm -hmm. Like, what is that going to do? And um, it, it just started teaching me. I didn't know how to process it at the time. But that this year has been a crazy year for everybody. There have been things that we thought we could count on, and all of a sudden we couldn't. There have been circumstances that out of nowhere we didn't see coming at all, and all of a sudden we're forced into a position we never thought we would be in. And we all have a decision in that moment how we're going to respond. And it's like God is ready in, in our time of trouble and in our time of need to awaken things in us that can only come by his spirit through hard things. There are things God can only produce in us through trouble, through suffering, through difficulty. God is right there ready to awaken brand new things in us. And the enemy is right there too with a counterfeit saying, don't choose that. Choose, I have a different option. Why don't you go to a place of anger instead, Rebecca? Why don't you blame that person in your family so it can cause a rift in your relationship that could take years for you guys to get over? Mm-hmm. Like, why instead? Why don't you go to this other place, a place of fear? Instead of being rejoicing in that I saved your son's life, why don't every night you go to a place of crippling fear as you put him in his bed again and you remember everything that just happened, all the trauma? And I'm like, I remember God speaking to me as I took him home do not let anything steal the joy of what I did. And I knew the thing that was ready to steal it was fear. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, here I am putting him in his bed again. Like, here I am remembering everything that just happened, everything I just walked through for the last 24 hours. And I felt like God was like, instead of fear, I want you to let this fuel a prayer life over him. Like God, God started reminding me of prayers I had prayed for Zavi before this ever happened, Mm -hmm. that God was like, bringing the fruit of in that moment. And he's like, I already provided for him. You didn't even know this was happening. I had you walk in his room at the right time. I brought the right medical team to intervene and save his life. I put my hand on that boy. I restored him. Like we walked out of the hospital 24 hours later with a clean bill of health from the ICU. When it happened, the nurse was like, it's been so long since I've discharged a family straight from ICU. I don't even remember how to do it because no one does that. No one goes from the ICU to actually leaving the hospital. They like step down. But he had such a massive turnaround the next day. The nurse was so excited because she's in she's looking at the most desperate situations ever. Mm -hmm. And she's looking at one discouraged and depressed family after another. She took Zavi around to all the rooms to encourage people that God is able to intervene in their situation. I know. And I like walked. I walked out of that and I'm like. You know, the enemy always has a plan to steal, to kill, and destroy. But Jesus says, but I have come that you will have life. And I feel like over and over again, God is standing before us saying, you have a choice today. Are you going to choose life? Are you going to choose death? Are you going to choose faith? Are you going to choose fear? Mm -hmm. Are you going to choose joy? Are you going to go to a place of anger and blame and resentment one of these will produce good things for years to come and the other one will lock you in a prison you don't have any way out of Mm -hmm. and um and i just remember god even showing me like blame specifically like how there you know there have been so many times in my own life that god could have gone to a place of blame towards me Mm -hmm. and he literally could have said this is your fault that this has happened. Like you are the reason you're in the situation or you're in the, you are the reason these bad things have taken place. And how many times God himself could choose blame against me. And instead he says, I've provided another way. I've forgiven you. I'm, I'm going to restore you. I'm going to make up for the years that you have lost, even years you've lost because of your own bad decision. Like I'm not, choosing blame against you when I could. So why would you choose that Mm -hmm. against someone else? So it's just been a good check for me because that, because I have seen in all the chaos going on socially, you know, the political stuff, everything that's happening. I've seen so many people rise up in anger and say things they never could see themselves saying, be in fights with people. They never thought they'd be in fights with literally be at like, opposing sides with people that usually they would consider friends and family. Uh And I'm like, okay, God is trying to awaken something in his people this year. And he's doing it through a really tough situation. I mean, even Paul says, how does the verse go? He says, um, 
I'm convinced that this present suffering is not worthy to be compared to the glory that will be revealed to us in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. In other words, I'm aware that there's suffering. I'm aware there's difficulty and there's trouble. But I know through this, God is about to reveal a glory through his son, Jesus, that cannot even compare with the misery we are feeling right now. And so I feel like God's been raising this sense of expectation. Don't look at the suffering and the trouble. Let your expectation be, what is God about to reveal? Mm -hmm. What is he about to show us we've never seen? Mm -hmm. That once we see it, we're going to be thankful that we walk through that hard place to get there, Mm -hmm. to have eyes to see it. Mm -hmm. And so I've just been asking God when I feel anger rising up in me or frustration or blame or resentment or whatever, all the lists of emotions we've all gone through in 2020, That's the counterfeit from the enemy. So God, what is it you are trying to awaken in me? Mm I don't know if that makes sense. That was a lot. Yes, that's so good. (laughs) No, that's so good. Katie fell asleep while I was talking. I didn't fall asleep. (laughs) I think I was in like a, am I going to cry or how do I respond? Because that's really good. I, the part that stood out to me, Rebecca, and everything that you said is when you said that God, a lot of times God can't do something in us or he can't produce something in us unless it's by, like, hardship. Oh, yeah. And I just think that's such a good reminder because we've all gone through, I mean, personally or as a whole, Yeah, we've gone through so much this year. Yes. But the reminder that we, God is doing something in it. Oh, yeah. Look up. Don't look down at the circumstances. Don't look at the day-to-day commentary on it like look up and see what god is doing i mean that's just Mm -hmm. that's worth it all so yeah god i just have been encouraged knowing that when god brings us through pain pain is always an opportunity for god to birth new things in us Mm -hmm. because he does not waste our pain i mean we can look at his son jesus he asked his son to go through more pain than we could ever imagine and then it says and therefore god highly exalted Mm -hmm. him like he was willing to be obedient mm-hmm. in the hardest things mm-hmm. you could ever imagine being obedient mm-hmm. to your father in. And then the reward God brought, like the, the, um, just the honor, all the restoration he brought as a result of Jesus being faithful. And so I've been, I, it's really shifted my mindset. Like when I walk through something crazy and painful, I start going, okay, God, this means you are at work and you're ready to do new things. I mean, you think about it, like, I don't know if you're a plant person. I used to be before I had young children and hopefully I will be again. Cause right now I buy them. Don't take care of them. They uh-huh. die. We go through the cycle. Uh-huh. But, um, you know, when you want a plant to start producing new things, there's only one way to do it. You cut away Mm -hmm. current branches and current growth and you cut back anything that's dead and anything that's excess. And when you cut all that away and you get it back to the bare essentials, it will start to Mm -hmm. produce new things. And that process of having things cut away is never fun. Mm -hmm. It's never enjoyable. It's, I mean, how enjoyable has 2020 been? And it's been a year of stripping away Mm -hmm. of everything, really. Of everything. But what does that mean if we start? I was telling Katie yesterday because we were hanging out and we were talking and and I was like, it helps me not to just stay on the ground and look around and have that like three foot perspective where I'm just looking at what's in front of my face and I'm being driven by the next crisis and the next situation. But to get to really start thinking, what does God see in this situation right now? What is his perspective And so lately I've just been asking God, like, what are you doing? So to see a year that's caused so much pain for so many, it's like God is stripping things away because he is about to produce new growth in his body in a way we have never seen. And I know so many people that have been praying and asking for God to bring revival. And I'm like a revival where we see a move from his his spirit isn't going to just come in a season where we're asleep, right. where we're complacent, right. where we're just focused on what's right in front of us or, you know, focused on ourselves. It comes when all of a sudden we get on our face again and we're like, God, I need you more than I need anything else. Mm-hmm. And I will do whatever you're mm-hmm. calling me to do because nothing is as important for you it, um, or as important as you. And so, yeah, that's kind of a place I've been in yeah. recently. No. And, you know, nobody ever wants to go through hard times. But, like, honestly, when I look back on different seasons of, of my life, it's like I look back on some of the hardest seasons, but I look back on them, like, in favorable memories. It's like, yeah. thank you, God. Like, yeah. 
when my dad had cancer, it's like, that was a terrible season. But yeah. when I look at what it's produced in our family and the faith that mm-hmm. my mom and dad have now, it's like, you could mark, you know, the timeline of your life based on hardship, but it's like, God mm-hmm. did this in me then, God did this in me then, God did this in me then. And it's, it ends up being such a cool thing when, when you see what God wants to awaken in you. So, yeah. Um, okay. So I would love if you would pray over the women just kind yeah. of around this theme. Yes. Um, and then we'll be done. Okay. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for your presence in our life. We thank you that you are a good father, that you are steady. Lord God, that you are stable. Um, We thank you that your son Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And uh, as, as much as we can count on the sun to rise in the morning and to set in the evening, we can count on you. So I just pray for anyone that's in a difficult place right now or discouraged place, Lord God, I pray you would lift their eyes. I pray that they would look at you and see you in a whole new way, that they would see you, that you're the help they're waiting on, that you are the maker of heaven and earth, that you have not left them, that you have a plan for them. You will not waste one moment of their pain. Every tear they have sown in sorrow, they will reap forth in joy, Lord God. I just pray you build an expectation in our hearts for what you are doing right now in the body of Christ and in this world, Lord God. We love you, and um, we just want to honor you with everything that we're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, thank you, Rebecca, so much for being with us today. Yeah, it was and, fun. Um, ladies, as always, if this podcast was helpful to you or encouraged you in any way, I would love it if you would share it on social media just so we can further the message of Jesus and an encouraging message. Um, and then uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks for being with us.